Hey everyone, today we have got a PlayStation 3 on the operating table that has been giving us some trouble. It keeps shutting off instantly. If I power it up again after a few moments, it goes back to the red light and then turns off again. If I turn it on right away, it does not show any signs of life. It appears that there is an issue with the short circuit. Alright, now that we have caught the case off. Since this is also a sign of a weak power supply, then replace the power supply. I have just installed another power supply. Let's go ahead and test it out. Same as before. The fan runs for a moment. Take a look at that. Since the power supply is turning off automatically, it may indicate a short circuit. After getting the motherboard out, the first step is to check its 12 volt terminals. Using a multimeter, we will identify the shorted component by checking for abnormal resistance values. As I had anticipated, these readings indicate a short circuit. This terminal is the positive 12 volt terminal and this inductor coil is connected to this terminal. And this inductor provides 12 volt at the drains of all these FETs. And this inductor provides 12 volt at the drains of these FETs. So we need to examine these FETs thoroughly to ensure that they are functioning properly. There is one gate pin and four drain pins while the three remaining pins are the source pins. I see the reading of 7.6 ohms indicates a short circuit. But the inductor input shows as 4 ohms. The gate resistance of the second FAT is approximately 20 kilo ohms. The reading on this gate indicates a resistance of 10 kilo ohms and 10 kilo ohms here as well. It appears that this FAT is defective. The shutdown is often related to the power supply or other critical components on the motherboard. It seems like there is a short circuit between the drain and source pins as well. Yes, it is. Let's proceed to inspect the remaining FETs. There is nothing wrong with that. Fine. Where is the gate of this FVT? It is also with the correct reading. Everything appears to be in order except for that one thing. Now we need to detach it from the motherboard. After that we can assess the situation and determine the appropriate next steps. After some investigation, we have identified a short FET as the culprit. Stick around as we diagnose and fix this issue together. I 
I am sure you would like to review these short circuit readings regarding this faulty FET. There are four drain pins and a single gate pin with the other three pins being source pins. As the motherboard has the rightmost gate pin solder pad, so this one is its gate pin. I am checking the connections between one gate pin and four drain pins. which has happened to be short with each other. The drain and source pins also short circuited. We need to check the 12 volt terminals to confirm if the short circuit issue has entirely been resolved from the motherboard. It is worth noting that there is no longer any possibility of shorting the in 12 volt terminals. Once we have pinpointed the shorted FET, it is time to grab a replacement. Make sure to get the right model and specifications for your PS3. Ensure that the drain and source pins on the new FET are not short circuited. While all the pins of the defective one are shorted together, If repeatedly toggle this gate, the drain and source pin must not be shot together. Get rid of the bad one. But before we put it on, it is also very important to find out the reason for its deterioration. We need to check the gate pin switching input to see if it caused the issue. The PWM chip generates a switching signal for these FETs and this is the PWM chip. We need to verify the values of the coupling resistors for all the outputs. This is the output coupling. It is connected to the gate of the decaying FET. The input logic of the coupling resistance is correct, but uh, output showing resistance. Too much resistance, which is not good. I believe the cause of its decline has also been identified. There is an issue with the resistance value. It is currently 11 ohms, but it should be 2.2 ohms. Uh, when compared to other resistance, it is incorrect and unsatisfactory. You can be sure of its value change. It is crucial to replace it with the appropriate one ensuring accuracy you can see 2R2 on the resistor indicating a value of 2.2 ohms so now we need a resistance of 2.2 ohms value so I will source from the donor board On the donor board I have come across two resistors but we only require one. When dealing with small resistances, it is essential to make sure that uh, the terminals are correctly connected to the motherboard. This can help preventing any potential issue and ensure that everything is working smoothly.
please check the value of the recently added resistance uh, to ensure that it is correct top of the vertical line has a slight bend it uh, indicates that the FET gate logic is correct now it is time to attach the FET to the motherboard properly make sure its pins are aligned to the solder pads keep it pressed until it cools down a bit I have not noticed any problems or issues that needed attention. Everything seems to be functioning as expected. Let's connect the component and observe the outcome. The device is currently displaying a red standby light and we are in the process of starting it up. The display will indicate that the problem has been resolved. Check the screen and confirm if the PlayStation 3 display is visible there now. Yes, it is. Another headache for me is that the hard disk faces another problem as it does not have its own. As the device needs to be jailbroken, we will proceed with the process. To refresh the thermal page, just apply a small drop of WD-40. I can assure you that this tip is highly effective. Let me share it with you. Once the thermal paste has been refreshed, we can reassemble it. Never forget to plug in this fan. I have connected the controller to it as well. Oh wow, it was not running. Hard disk has run itself. It still needs to be jailbroken. Instead of using a hand jailbreak, I would perform an actual jailbreak on it. Before beginning the jailbreak process, it is necessary to install the latest HFW firmware on your device. Connect both devices to the same router to link the PlayStation to your computer. Mm -hmm. 
the PlayStation has been connected to the router. To connect it to your computer, let me guide you through the steps. Launch its internet browser and going to my computer. To run these files, you will need to execute them on your PlayStation. To accomplish this task, we need to launch the HFS file server as an administrator from this location. In this window, use the right mouse button and click on the left box. Click on the button Add folder from the disk. Then click on the same folder name PS3 Flash Writer 4.90. Click OK first and then click the real folder button. Just note of this IP address as we will need it to enter it into the address bar of our PS browser. Go to your PlayStation and enter this IP address in the browser address bar. Here you go. Select the same file folder PSC flash right 4.90. Now keep clicking as per further instruction and your work will be done. It will take some time here. After restarting your PlayStation, you can choose to install any preferred custom hardware. there you have it folks we have successfully diagnosed and fixed the instant shutdown issue on this PlayStation 3 all thanks to a shorted FVT if you found this video helpful don't forget to drop a like subscribe for more tech fixes and let me know in the comment if you have ever encountered a similar problem until next time happy gaming